Uh, welcome back, folks. Today's topic is by popular demand, or at least as popular as demand gets on a tiny channel like mine. On almost every 3D printer mod video that I make, somebody comments on my use of Ethernet cables for some of my 3D printer wiring. So um, let's talk about that. Let's start off by saying that if you have a working printer with relatively well-managed cabling, then this video is not for you. Uh, you're not going to gain any functionality by switching to ethernet cable, and you'll likely spend hours and days soldering and crimping and, and debugging with the multimeter before everything is working as you expect it. And that's just to get back to where you are already today. Now, on the other hand, if you're adding a new component like a BL Touch and you need to run those five wires up to your hot end, or uh, maybe you're switching from a Bowden to a direct drive and you need to run the four stepper wires up to your hot end, or maybe you're rearranging the motors from a Cartesian to Core X wire, something like that, uh, then it may make sense to check out Ethernet cables. Now, to be clear, there is nothing special about the wires in an Ethernet cable. They're, they're just regular old 24-ish gauge copper wires that are twisted together in a specific pair to reduce crosstalk and, and other interference. And in the case of Cat6 cable, there's a plastic insulator shoved in there. Now, like regular hookup wire, Ethernet cables come in both solid core and stranded varieties with the same benefits and drawbacks. Solid core has better overall conductivity, uh, it works better in screw style connectors and in scissor splicers, and when you bend it, it stays in place. Now, the downside is that repetitive stress can break the cores along the run, and you'll have a very hard time figuring out where the break is. Uh, solid core also doesn't work well in DuPont or JST style crimps, so between those two downsides, solid core is pretty much a non-starter for most 3D printer wiring. Now, on the other hand, stranded wire handles repetitive stress better, and, and you can crimp connectors directly to it. However, it cannot be reliably used in scissor-style splices like those used in keystone jacks. So, unfortunately, you can't just punch down your stepper and thermistor wires into a keystone jack and then plug in a cable. Uh, at least not for long. You may be able to get it to work for a little while, uh, but sooner or later, you'll have connection issues, especially with the super small thermostore wires. Now, there's nothing to keep you from treating an ethernet cable as just a plain bundle of wire and stripping and crimping directly to the individual wires. In fact, that is probably the easiest and most reliable way of utilizing ethernet cable as you avoid all of the soldering and crimping and testing that comes with the connectors. So if you just want compact cables that are easy to feed, you can probably just stop there. Now, the downside is that these wires are tiny and fragile, and, and if you mess one wire up, you'll probably have to replace the entire cable. Now, on the other hand, if you want to use Ethernet connectors because you're moving things around a lot, or, or you just think it looks cool, uh, then I have a few options for you. As suggested above, you can't punch down stranded wire to the keystone jacks, but you can punch down solid core wire and solder it to little screw terminals. I designed this little case to take a keystone jack, one of these small PCBs, and eight screw terminals. The keystone clips into the top, and each wire is punched and soldered to an individual terminal. Then all you have to do is strip your stepper or thermistor wires and screw them into the connectors. Uh, it's reliable, and you don't have to crimp JST connectors to everything. Now, the downside is that the keystone, the PCB, and the screw terminals, they take up a lot of room. This may not be a huge concern at like the control board end, uh, but you can really mess things up if you're trying to keep your X carriage you know, small and light. Now, I ran a custom version of this with two keystone jacks hot glued to a set of 16 screw terminals for a long time, and it was a great solution. And if you have the room on your X carriage for kind of a, a large hat, then I really recommend this. Now, this final option is as compact as a keystone jack, it's cheaper than a keystone jack, and it doesn't have the issue with stranded versus solid wire. However, it is quite a bit more labor intensive. I found these solderable ethernet connectors that have a matching little PCB. You solder the, the connector to the PCB, and you have eight solder points. Uh, in theory, you could solder your wires directly to this little PCB, which may be a reliable but permanent solution. However, they are spaced for standard pin headers. Now, this is ideal for something like a BL Touch, with, which comes with a cable that's already JST crimped. However, for other short runs of cable, you'll likely have a lot of stripping and crimping to do. 
Now, to go along with these solderable connectors, I created an enclosure with a bunch of mounting options. You can use just a, a single connector and a cap that just kind of floats in line with the cable, and, and it's not much larger than a keystone. Uh, there's also a double version for when you need two connectors. Uh, you can also use this 2020 base to secure it to your printer frame. Uh, there's a version with smaller M3 size mounting holes, which are compatible with my enclosure lids. And finally, if you're using my X carriage, I have a cable tower that takes up to three of these. And the cap supports both vertical and horizontal pins. However, I recommend going with the vertical pins and then feeding them back through the back of the cap as a form of strain relief. So those are cabling and mounting options I've used for a few Ethernet cables. I do have a few more suggestions and recommendations. Now, first, if you're going to use Ethernet style connectors and make custom Ethernet cables, then I would recommend still following Ethernet wiring standards. So now there's nothing to keep you from wiring them up in any pattern. It's just a bundle of wire after all. Uh, but there's no reason not to make a standard cable that's easy to exchange or, or reuse for something other than your printer. Second, the little tiny wires in an ethernet cable are entirely too small to power a heater core. Don't even try it. I've had a lot of luck with fans and steppers, but that's as much juice as I would try to push through these little wires. Uh, next, use the correct connectors. Uh, you may be able to plug a DuPont connector into a JST housing, uh, but it's probably not gonna stay on well and there's a non-zero chance you'll plug it in wrong. Uh, and that brings me to my next piece of advice. Continuity test everything twice. It's very easy to mix up a wire color or a pin number or to accidentally crimp insulation instead of wire, especially with these tiny little wires. So hopefully that clears up most of the questions folks may have over the ethernet cables that show up in my videos. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop a comment below. And as always, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like my other videos, go ahead and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.